You guys are always telling me in the comments section below that you love a good used CPU and also a good used motherboard. So today, I'm not gonna let you down. We've got an i5-750 and this thing clocked all the way up to four gigahertz on a really cheap cooler. This is the TX3 from Cooler Master, entry level CPU cooler, I was really surprised. And we're comparing that against the latest and greatest 8600K, eighth generation versus first generation i5. Now the 8600K does have two more cores, of course, and it does have much better IPC. However, this is eight years in the making and back in 2009, this little i5-750 was released for around about $190 street price. It was also overclockable and with that, it came with a 2.66 gigahertz base clock and you could overclock these things really high, which still makes them very popular even in today's titles. The 8600K on the other hand comes in with a street price of around $260. That's if you can get one due to the limited supplies. But a cool fact is $190 to this day with 3% year-on-year -year inflation adjusted would be around about $244. So it seems like there's a little bit of a price hike going on there. And also in my recent 1070 Ti review, I tested a lot of different graphics cards, the 1080 Ti being one of them. So I thought to myself, why not put this i7-750 up against this 8600K? We have up here firstly Destiny 2. Now at 1080p we saw a massive difference. Now keep in mind this is with the 1080 Ti. If you were using a lower end graphics card, even a GTX 1060, you'd be hard pressed to find a difference between these two CPUs. Though with that in mind, there was a 100% increase with the 8600K. And keep that in mind, it was also on ultra settings. And this was also with a frame cap of 200 FPS. When we went up to 4K, there was only a 20% difference. So in this game, if you were gaming at 4K, there wouldn't be too much of a benefit of getting an eighth gen CPU eight years into the future over a little i5-750 on the latest graphics card. Though let's fast forward things to Wolfenstein 2. Here the i5 750 did do a little bit better than the previous title. Really at 1080p it only scored in around 20% lower with 170 FPS versus 210. Though when it came to the 4K results, we only saw a 10% increase going to the 8600K versus the i5-750. Now moving on to Deus Ex Mankind Divided. Now sometimes I do like to have a bit of fun with the titles, just like this title I'm pulling up for you now. And we saw here this was the best result for the i5-750 in all the results here today. There was really no difference between these two at 4K, one FPS on average, and then of course a minus two on the minimum. Though keep in mind, this is an extremely GPU intensive benchmark at ultra settings at 4K on this title. Though moving over to 1080p, we did see quite a substantial difference going to the 80s down to the 60s. So there's around about a 30% drop going from the eighth gen to the first gen i5. Then moving on to Players Unknown's Battlegrounds, aka PUBG, there was actually quite a big difference. Not only the average FPS, especially at 1080p, we saw 80s versus 130 with the 8600K. And also keep in mind in that benchmark, there was a frame cap just to keep things equal with all the other testing I did in the past. There was also the minimums or the 0.1% lows in this test were a lot different. I did notice some dips on the i5-750, so it was still a good experience it was just a lot better on the 8600K, especially if you're playing competitively. Though it is a good thing to note that the i5-750, if you couple it with some mid-range graphics cards, it will give you a very enjoyable experience in PUBG. Moving up to 4K, there was virtually no difference, just like Deus Ex Mankind Divided. However, in this case, the 0.1% lows were a little bit worse off. Though the last title I've got up for you guys is Far Cry Primal, and we did see around about a 10% dip at 4K going between these two different CPUs, the minimum FPS also suffered quite a bit more than the comparison of the drop from the average FPS. Though 1080p did see a much bigger drop and it was to the tune of like almost double. So you're getting a 100% increase going to the 8600K over the i5-750. So that pretty much in a nutshell sums up the results. Now I will reiterate like I did before, 1080 Ti it is the best graphics card out there at the moment for gamers. I mean, you can get better graphics cards, you can do things in SLI, but really for the realistic folk out there, the 1080 Ti is pretty much the best in slot out there at the moment. Though it does get better. The good news for the i5-750 is it did perform really well. When we look at the absolute figures, not just the comparison figures, it did perform really well. If you're into Destiny 2, you can get 100 FPS out of this CPU if you overclock, and that's gonna be really good for the majority of gamers. It's gonna be a lot better than a console, and this is coming from a CPU 
that's eight years old. Now, one thing I didn't do too well on with this was the memory overclocks. I was using some really generic underpowered stuff. So in future comparisons, I will try and get some really good DDR3 memory and see if that makes a bit more of a difference on this platform. I also look forward to giving you guys some more in-depth tests with these used parts, but really when it comes down to it, you can pick up the i5-750s for a bargain price in today's market. Also, if you find yourself a P55 or H55 motherboard, then you've got a really potent combo when it comes to gaming. I mean, it was 100% the worst case scenario and that was with the best graphics cards. So really when it comes down to it, it is a great buy, the i5-750. So really the worst we got was a 100% drop and this is eight years in the making, which really isn't that impressive at all. And you can see that Moore's Law is coming to an end. It's actually come to an end a long time ago, in my opinion, 100% in eight years. It's meant to be doubling every two years. So we're pretty much 25% of Moore's Law if we were to do these gaming benchmarks as any sort of indicator. So anyway guys, as always, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button and let me know in the comments section below, are you a fan of the used price performance PC parts? The little i5-750, he does do all right. And I know there is the Xeon X3470, that's my favorite. However, I just had this i5-750 on hand. And of course, I wanted to see how far the i5 generations of CPUs have come and they don't include hyper-threading. Usually the 8600K, still doesn't include hyper-threading. So it was a great apples to apples comparison in the i5 sense, even though the prices and of course, the age of these CPUs does differ by a lot. Anyway guys, I'll catch you in another tech video very soon, possibly some used PC parts hunting on good old Gamtree, and I'll peace out for now. Bye.